Greetings in Christ. I'm Pastor John Fritz of Hope Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Aurora, Illinois. And I'd like to welcome you to our worship service for this Trinity Sunday in the year of our Lord 2023. We follow a slightly adapted version of Divine Service 2 from Lutheran Worship. Our opening hymn this morning is Come Thou Almighty King. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me as we confess the one true Christian faith in the words of the Athanasian Creed. Whoever will be saved shall, above all else, hold the Catholic faith. Which faith, except everyone keeps whole and undefiled, without doubt, he will perish eternally. And the Catholic faith is this that we worship one God in three persons and three persons in one God, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. For there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Spirit. But the Godhead of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit is all one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, and the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father incomprehensible, the Son incomprehensible, and the Holy Spirit incomprehensible. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, and the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. As there are not three uncreated, nor three incomprehensibles, but one uncreated, and one incomprehensible. So likewise, the Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, and the Holy Spirit Almighty. And yet, they are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And yet, they are not three gods, but one God. So likewise, the Father is Lord, the Son Lord, and the Holy Spirit Lord. And yet, they are not three lords, but one Lord. For as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge every person by himself to be both God and Lord, so we cannot by the Catholic faith say that there are three gods or three lords. The Father is made of none, neither created nor begotten. The Son is of the Father alone, not made nor created, but begotten. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeding. So there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. 
And in this trinity, none is before or after another, none is greater or less than another, but the whole three persons are co-eternal together and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been said, the unity in trinity and the trinity in unity is to be worshipped. He, therefore, that will be saved is compelled to think of the trinity. Furthermore, it is necessary to everlasting salvation that he also believe faithfully the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the right faith is that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is God and man, God of the substance of the Father begotten before all worlds, and man of the substance of his mother born in the world, perfect God and perfect man of a reasonable soul and human flesh subsisting, equal to the Father as touching his Godhead, and inferior to the Father as touching his manhood, who, although he is God and man, yet he is not two but one Christ, one not by conversion of the Godhead into flesh, but by taking the manhood into God, one altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the reasonable soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead, at whose coming all men will rise again with their bodies and will give an account of their own works. And they that have done good will go into life everlasting, and they that have done evil into everlasting fire. This is the Catholic faith, which, except a man believe faithfully and firmly, he cannot be saved. We continue with the confession and absolution of our sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for Jesus' sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? and the Son of Man, that you care for him. Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Please join me as we praise God, singing, This is the Feast. May the Lord be with you. We pray the Collect for Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, since you have given us, your servants, grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of the true faith and to worship the true unity and the power of your divine majesty, keep us also steadfast in this true faith and worship and defend us ever from all our adversaries. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson is selected verses from Genesis chapter 1 and 2, but actually the entire first two chapters, or even first three chapters, could be well read to your benefit. Selected verses from Genesis chapter 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Skipping down to verse 26, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Our second lesson is selected verses from Acts chapter 2. 
But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders, and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness in your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into heaven, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. At this time, please join me as we sing, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. gospel is Matthew chapter 28 verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had directed them and when they saw him they worshiped him but some doubted and Jesus came and said to them all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of the Lord. Our sermon hymn for Trinity Sunday is Alleluia, let praises ring. Oh uh -huh. 
brothers and sisters in Christ. On this Trinity Sunday, I had two different titles for the sermon. One was, Will You Serve the Holy Trinity or the Unholy Trinity for All Eternity? And the other is actually a statement of fact. You will serve the Holy Trinity or the Unholy Trinity for All Eternity. And then picking up on the words of Joshua, As for me and my house, we certainly, by God's grace, will do our absolute best to serve the Lord. Our nation has gone through various cultural upheavals. One of the most desperately fought recently is whether God actually created mankind as male and female. And a major retailer has recently joined forces with an avowed Satanist who claims not to actually believe in the reality of Satan. And as C.S. Lewis reminds us, Satan doesn't care if you believe in him or not. Satan is thrilled if you give him credit and place him on an equal footing with God and so exaggerate his power and ability. But he also doesn't care if you don't believe him or his existence at all. And so there actually are some Satanists out there who do not believe in the reality of Satan. They just think of grabbing all the gusto you can in whatever way tickles your ego and your fancy, that that is perfectly fine. But the Bible warns us that there's not only the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, true God from all eternity, but there's also an unholy trinity, which we are subject to by virtue of the sin that we inherit from Adam and Eve. The devil, the world, and our own fallen human nature are the unholy trinity. And we will be serving either the holy trinity or the unholy trinity for all eternity somewhere. Now, it doesn't seem very festive to be bringing up hellfire and damnation on a joyful Trinity Sunday, but God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit went to great lengths to inform us of the reality of our sinfulness, the reality that we need saving from the old evil foe, and to point us to Christ, who was God from all eternity, as we confessed in the Athanasian Creed, and who also at a very specific moment in time, the moment of his conception in the womb of the Virgin Mary, he also became man, not by changing and spin blending a little bit of the divine into humanity, but as we confessed, by assuming that perfect humanity into the divine. Jesus was willing to do everything necessary to rescue you from sin, death, the power of the devil, because he loved you that much. In our lessons for today, we are reminded that we are to praise God and to give him thanks and glory for his intervening in our lives and revealing his real nature to us. He does that only and perfectly in his word. There are some visions that we can get through a glass darkly as we look to nature and we can look at almost all of the really good illustrations of the Trinity that are out there. And if you push them too far, you find yourself in one of the classical anti-Trinitarian heresies. But God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is absolutely unique. Right from the very beginning of Genesis chapter 1, we have God in his beginning of his creative activity speaking 
And John chapter 1 tells us, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So you have the Father and the Son, the spoken Word. And then right away in verse 2, you have the Holy Spirit hovering upon and enriching and enlivening the waters of creation. The Father reveals himself more clearly as God's word continues, and he also reveals the enemies of God's people. We're told in John chapter 8, 44, that the devil is a liar and a murderer from the beginning, and we certainly rue the fall into sin that Adam and Eve jointly made. We also are told that the devil disguises himself as an angel of light. And I would encourage you, if you haven't read it lately, to get into C.S. Lewis's screw tape letters to look at some of the possible twists and leverages that the devil throws out for us. Working as he did with Eve to create doubt, did God really say, is God maybe holding something good back from you? And does the devil perhaps offer something better? If your retailer has signed on with an avowed Satanist, I would really suggest that you find a different retailer. The particular Satanist involved with one of the major retailers in our society has said that the only appropriate neckwear for all people who do not embrace their radical sexual identity is a guillotine and that all people who do not embrace this radical, sinful sexual identity, or the lie of the great Satan, should be eliminated. That doesn't sound terribly open or inclusive to me. And yet, since the devil is a liar and a murderer from the beginning, that fallen angel has no problem trying to create death and destruction wherever he reigns. The Bible tells us that the devil is specifically on a limited choke chain and he does not have free reign. But we don't know exactly what the limits are. We can look back on human history and see the horrors of the Holocaust and the pogroms and the excesses and murders, mass murders even, of millions at the hands of communists and socialists. Where God speaks clearly, it doesn't matter how many people vote and say God couldn't possibly know what he's talking about. There's always that moment of human ego and pride that wants to shake our fist at God and say, you couldn't possibly know what you're talking about. Who do you think you are, God? We've decided that God doesn't exist. And yet, God's word remains true no matter who claims that he doesn't know what he's talking about. God's word will stand for all eternity and through the power of the Holy Spirit he calls every single one of us to repent of all of our sins. Whether our sins are the flavor of the day and most in vogue with whatever societal or cultural perversion happens to pop up, or if they're more quote-unquote acceptable in the eyes of the many, or more concealable. God calls everyone to recognize and acknowledge that the unholy trinity leads to an unholy eternity for all who reject the Holy Trinity and refuse to trust in Christ as Savior and Lord and through the power of the Holy Spirit believe in him and respond to his amazing grace. 
for us as believers, we don't have the option to call down God's imprecations upon those who violently oppose us or who even call for our martyrdom for standing on the word of God. Jesus in Matthew 28 says, disciple all the nations, teaching them to observe not just the acceptable few truths, but teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you. And behold, I will be with you always to the end of the age. This age where Satan is on that limited choke chain and our fallen sinful nature and our fallen society have a limited reign to mock the Lord and his saints. This will come to an end and the Lord is faithful. He will see us through. You will serve the Holy Trinity or the unholy Trinity for all eternity somewhere by God's grace and through the power of his Holy Spirit calling and tugging at your heart. Even now, I call you back to the grace that he gave you in your baptism. I call you to say with Joshua and all of the saints and martyrs and witnesses of old, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit on Trinity Sunday and always in his strength, in his power, and by his mercy. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which is beyond all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray. Dear Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for revealing yourself to us through your perfect, inerrant word and calling us to repent of our sin and trust in you. Preserve us from the unholy trinity of the devil, the world, and our flesh, and empower us to stand boldly upon your word, no matter what institutions or organizations oppose you. Increase our faith, our grasp upon your truth, and our witness to rightly observe and effectively share all things you have commanded us, beginning in our families, extended families, and even discipling all nations. Please stop the wars, famine, illnesses, murders, injustice, and bold-faced depravity plaguing our land and our world. According to your will, give those we name in our hearts the healing that you know to be best for them. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord, the one true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn today is Praise to the Lord the Almighty.